this last method shows how you can start with something that's sort of imprecise like a sketch and start to use those as a reference in Rhino to create something more precise and iterate on that. So I've imported this picture into Rhino on the front view. It's been split here. And uh, what I'm going to do is take one of these drawings, I'm going to draw a line on it, and we're going to figure out the scale of this thing. So we're going to select that line we just drew, type length, and we get that it's three foot, three feet two inches. I'm going to select all of these items. I'm going to use the scale command and select the first and the reference point, and now I'm going to type 10 feet. Um, now if I select that item or that uh, that line and I type length, it's telling me it's 10 feet. So now I have a sketch that was sort of done uh, freehandedly, you know, just with proportions and I can start to give it dimensions. So let's say I just want to deal with a few of these. I'm going to take these, uh, let's go ahead and take the, the top ones. So I'm going to shift select these items and I'm going to actually copy them over using alt. I'm going to give them a little bit of distance. So now I know I'm dealing with four sketches and we can see what's happening in a perspectival view. But what I want to do essentially is create a, um, a method for iteration. So I'm going to take this front view and I'm going to use a similar method as the last uh, method by creating a box here but now I can type dimensions so if I want this to be 10 feet by 10 feet I can create that elevation with exact dimensions even though my sketch is sort of a rough dimension because I scaled it up I know it will be roughly 10 feet and now I'm going to give it a further dimension let's give this 10 feet as well or I can just enter now Rather than creating this box, you know, a bunch of times, I know I want all of these boxes to be 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet. So I'm going to copy these over based on the corner of the sketches. And they might not be in the exact right location. We could see that that one was pretty close, but this one's getting a little bit off. And then this one's, you know, pretty far off. So I'm going to go back into a perspective or into a front view. And we're just going to adjust these, but I'm going to keep them all at the same Z datum. So I'm going to move these over a little bit. And then I'm going to select the, um, the sketches. And there, if I want to move something in a plane, like an XY plane, you'll see that there's a little button between them. And so now I can move this, this item around a little bit um, in, in that plane. So I'm just going to move these so I have my, my roofs, you know, sort of where I want them. And this one I'm actually going to move as well. The next step is to take these um, sketches and use them basically as a guideline. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the C plane in the front view to the surface of one of these cubes. I know they're all sort of coplanar to each other. I'm not worried about that. Um, so I can set it to the front of one and I know I'm going to be drawing um, essentially on the surfaces of all of them. So what I'm going to do here is I know this pitch will probably be at the midpoint. So I'm going to use my smart guide, go over where the midpoint is. And I can draw it in that way or I can go to the midpoint and create a, a guide. I know this is about seven feet, so I'm going to give it a more precise dimension so it's not um, something obscure. If we go back to a perspectival view, you can see that I drew in the C plane that is at the front of this object. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful for when you're drawing on the C plane and you can see an object behind it is if you snap, you can see in the perspectival view that it's going to want to snap to the um, uh, to the objects. So just be aware of that. But if we go to the perspective view. Um, I'll take this object and I can make it a planar surface where I can select these lines. I don't actually have to join them. I can extrude the curve and I can make sure it's solid and it will still um, figure out it's a, it's a solid. So I can, uh, I can now join these or I can leave them separate and I've essentially um, uh, created this, this sketch here. 
So that's one method to go basically, you know, looking at the, the drawing and, and sketching something that's got a little bit more precision to it. You can also just take these images now, move them back a little bit, and you can start to use these as references. You know, basically you're looking at a sketch in the same screen. So for, for this option, I could create a sphere, um, give it a two point uh, restriction, and it will create a sphere on that point. If I go back to the, the perspective, you know, I, I can shrink this down a little bit or I can move it up. And then I have, um, you know, pretty close to, to the beginnings of that drawing. Um, for this, I can go ahead and go create a, a plane here by drawing a line. As long as I'm not snapping. This is sort of uh, imprecise, so I'll use the move command and make sure it's on the midpoint and I can give it um, uh, an exact location. Then use something like extrude curve. Make sure I'm in a perspective mode and I can change the direction. And maybe I want to imprecisely change this um, width. I can move it up a little bit if I want, and then I can also extrude this surface. Um, I can use also an, a command called offset surface, um, which shows the direction I'm offsetting, and it gives me a distance, so I'll have this be one foot. Now if I go into a perspective, it's fairly close to the sketch, but I know that it has um, some precise dimensions and, and locations.